This week we're in the state of Oregon. As you can see, a beautiful place to visit. And it's also known for its wine. And I hope to leave here with a bottle of its famous Pinot Noir. But to be honest with you, what I really want to leave here with is a better understanding of a certain automaker and where it's going. That automaker is Mitsubishi. Makes good cars, but hey, it's not at the top of everyone's list. Now they tell me the success in this business, the secret to success is product product and more product. Well, Mitsubishi is shrinking. They've axed the Endeavor, the Eclipse, the Spider, the Gallant could be next, which leaves them with the Lancer and the Outlander. So here we are in Oregon to meet some more product by Mitsubishi. But are you ready for this? It's an electric car. Who is buying electric cars? So this week, we're going to try and find out Mitsubishi's motivation and also check out the iMev. They're abandoning conventional products and then moving to a non-conventional product, which uh, what it's going to do for them as a company, I have no idea. Uh, I get the sense that it's going to be a tough sell. Do I see this as being the answer to everything? No, but I see it as an alternative to people that are tech savvy, but they want to try and do their part to lower emissions. It's uncharted territory. We honestly don't know how big the market's going to be, but it's the wave of the future. It's, it's where we're going as a company, but we're still staying Mitsubishi. It's still fun to drive. This is the first fully electric vehicle for Mitsubishi Motors in North America. It's basically the first step into alternative uh, uh, propulsion vehicles that uh, Mitsubishi is developing. So this is merely just uh, one foot in the door and uh, we'll be uh, developing a future product as well. Basically, there's three methods of recharging the battery pack in the vehicle. Uh, you can use your traditional 120 volt household outlet. Just your standard outlet, you could plug the vehicle into that. The other option is to go with a 240 volt outlet, which everybody's got 240 in their house already with their clothes dryer or maybe with their stove. And that will allow you to charge the vehicle in a much shorter time frame. And this is where we see most people charging the vehicle. It will allow you to do your commute every day and then when you come home in the evening, uh, you just merely plug the vehicle in and by the next morning you're ready to go. Range anxiety is still very much a real real issue and until they overcome the range anxiety issue people that are going to buy electric cars are going to be far and few between. It is going to be a limited market I mean realistically it's urban commuter you're not going to drive to the national park in this thing until you get the infrastructure going so there'll be select people you'll get the, the people who really need it could be the second car third car in their in their fleet but they'll probably have another car as well. You know, I don't care what kind of fuel is being used to propel our vehicles of the future. You gotta have some infrastructure. Remember natural gas? You couldn't find a place to fill up and that same challenge faces electric. However, they're doing their part here in Portland, Oregon. It's called Electric Avenue. Some electric companies have got together to set up a block of plugins. Now you have to pay for the parking, but the electricity is free. Well, not really because I'm paying for it. In fact, we're all paying for it. The vehicle is actually rear wheel drive. The motor is actually 66 horsepower, uh, 145 pound feet of torque, which is substantial for a small electric motor. And the other uh, really nice thing about electric motors are they develop all their torque at zero. So as soon as you step on the throttle, you're getting 100% of that torque. Most cars come with key fobs these days and the Meve is no different, but this one, well, it has a different function. This is a connection between you and your car. You're in your house, the car is in the driveway or in the garage, and you can set the time of the charge to begin and for how long. You can also monitor that charge. You can also set the temperature of the interior cabin. And the reason is quite simple. Most of the stress on the battery comes from either the motor or the HVAC system. This way, by the time you're ready to drive the car, the temperature is just perfect, less stress on the battery, and you'll get more out of that charge. It's a strange move. I think they're brave for doing it, but you know, sometimes bravery is also mistaken for being foolhardy. And I think they're foolhardy in this instance. Is this gonna be a commuter car that people are facing uh, a commute of like 100 plus kilometers a day? 
no, it's not the answer to that. But for people that can afford to have a second car that they can use to run about in the city, uh, I think it's a great vehicle. Mitsubishi says you're not going to lose anything by going from a gasoline engine to an electric car like the iMeef. Well, I disagree. There's a list of things you're going to lose, especially convenience. Yes, I know it's a car for strictly urban driving, but it's a pretty expensive second or third one-dimensional vehicle to have in your garage. Now, as for the car itself, I like it. I mean, that electric motor, instant torque. It handles itself well on the highway, quiet inside. You've actually got luggage space. And if I could drop into a gas station and fill up with electricity, just like I do with my gasoline car, hey, I am there. But you know, electric cars have been around for a long time, and the same problem persists, range anxiety. And I don't see them figuring that one out for a long, long time. Until they do, I'm sticking with a clean, efficient internal combustion engine, or better yet, clean diesel.